I didn't see you there. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Filipinos are a mixture of Austronesians, Ma Malays, Chinese, Spanish, Japanese, and American. The mixture of these races makes Filipinos mestizo as they also have indigenous descent. Most Filipinos that come into America are usually a higher class citizen in the Philippines and they come here somewhat wealthy and actually pretty high income. Now. According to a few studies, Filipino Americans are the second largest Asian American group in America, right under the Chinese, which is uh, around 3.8 million people. Our Filipinos are very resilient, they are family oriented, Filipinos also like to party, and they are leaders. And as we go on through this presentation, you guys will see that. Hello, today we will be talking about the Filipino migrations to the United States of America. Come closer. This is the Philippines. It is an archipelago, which means it is a group of islands. This is the United States. As you can see, the United States and the Philippines are very far from each other. In fact, they are separated by the largest ocean on Earth, the Pacific Ocean. This means that they could not make contact with each other until very recently in human history. When in 1899, Spain and the United States were, went to war with each other, where the United States won Cuba. Puerto Rico. The Philippines. And Guam. In the war. Afterwards, Philippines and the United States went to war with each other. Where the, where the Philippines unsuccessfully fought for their independence. But before we get to that part, we must discuss the period between 1899 and 1945, when the Philippines was a, an American colony and many Filipinos came to the United States to work in Hawaii and California in the plantations and the Central Valley for farming. After World War II in 1945, Many uh, American GIs went to the Philippines where there was a base to fight Japan. There, many veterans became involved with local women and got married with them and produced children from their union. The period afterward was the first period of chain migration when American veterans from World War II brought their wives and children over from the Philippines to the United States after the war. Now, it is very common for uh, Filipino Americans to practice such type of chain migrations. Just like other migrant groups coming to America, Filipinos are the same, but they have different push and pull factors. They came here to, to get a better opportunity for themselves. They came as students and they came as workers. Several push factors that caused Filipinos to come to America include the economic instability caused by several wars that happened in the first half of the 20th century. That included the Philippine-American War and also World War II. After World War II, many Philippine-born uh, nationals were eligible for U.S. citizenship. U.S. citizenship granted them freedoms such as being able to stay in the U.S. Uh, and many other benefits, also not getting deported. For the pull factors, many of the Filipinos came to America in order to get a new life, employment opportunities, and work. Strong ties to family caused Filipinos who were able to find work in America to send back money they worked for back to families in the Philippines. Its strong economy brought many Filipinos to the United States. 
They were willing to cross an entire ocean only to work low-wage jobs. But these American low-wage jobs, mostly blue-collar jobs, were still paying higher than white-collar jobs back in the Philippines. Many sent back what they earned to their families in the Philippines. These remittances helped their families support themselves. Migrating before World War II seemed like an easy option for Filipinos because since the Philippines at the time was an American Commonwealth, Filipinos sensed that they were a part of America and that they would be able to fit in. Filipinos not only came to America because of work, they also came because of the better education opportunities that America provided. By 1920 to 1925, 2,000 Filipinos were registered across American campuses, universities, and also the lower grade levels across the country. By the Great Depression, numbers dwindled. By 1935, only 500 were registered, and numbers continued to fall throughout the era by uh, 300 being registered in 1939. So how were the Filipinos received? Migration started from the Philippines to America in the late 19th century to the early 20th century due to the Treaty of Paris. The Spanish-American War was an 1898 conflict between the United States and Spain. The Treaty of Paris ending the Spanish-American War was signed on December 10, 1898. In it, Spain renounced all claim to Cuba, seceded Guam, and Puerto Rico to the United States and transferred sovereignty over the Philippines to the United States for $20 million. The Filipinos had the highest rate in assimilation in the Asian American group. They were stuck in between their culture and the American culture when arriving here, so they had no way of making them stand out because of the way they were treated. So this made them become known as the forgotten Asian American group. But as all minorities deal with, Filipinos have some negative stereotypes to them. One of them is that usually a few of them can be poor. And for that reason, usually the women go after white men and that is just for money. Another one can be that Filipinos are related to everyone. Does that mean that I'm Filipino? I don't know. Now, Filipinos are also a part of the model minority, and this can be a good thing or a bad thing. The reason why is because as hardworking as they are, white Americans tend to push other minorities a bit lower and shame them. As they would say, if you were as hardworking, or you would become just as successful as the Filipino Americans or other Asian Americans, you could someday become a good citizen or a part of the model minority. Filipinos bring good hospitality. They also are well educated. They take great pride in their families. And on top of that, they also have very good singers. An example of one would be Bruno Mars. They have excellent boxers and basketball players. Another example for a boxer will be Manny Pacquiao. Filipinos also have extremely good food and they are very respectful. And one last thing about Filipinos is that they love karaoke night. When I say love, they love karaoke. Watch this. Let me show you something. Watch these guys. These guys are getting so into it. traditions that the Filipinos have brought to the U.S. Let's start off with the language. Since a lot of the Filipinos were from different groups, such as the Spanish group, a lot of the languages are pretty much the same. So when they came to America, the English language wasn't that very difficult to assimilate to. So now we have different dialects and the combination of English and Tagalog. Here's a conversation in Tagalog. As you will notice, some of the words are in English and Spanish, and this is all due to bilingualism. Como esta? Como esta? Um, mm, nasaan ba yung mga restaurant dito? Mm, ang restaurant ang taon. Salamat. Walang aroman. Due to the heavy influence of Spanish and American religious cultures, Filipinos mostly identify with either being Catholic or Christian, Protestant or Pentecostal. Kutuma ko! 
Nasan ka ba? Maria said, Thankfully, food is a great way to connect with people. A lot of the traditions, especially that food you're eating right now, it's called lumpia. Lumpia is a well-known dish that a lot of Filipinos can make pretty easily, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. For Filipinos, music was a big part of their lives. The first generation Filipinos were able to interpret music with jazz through swing dancing and Latin arrangements. Here is a traditional Filipino folkloric dance called tinikling. Tinikling was originated from the Spanish colonial era. Tinikling is a dance that usually involves two people beating, tapping, and sliding bamboo poles on the ground and against each other in coordination with one or more dancers who step over and in between the poles in the dance. It imitates the movement of the tinikling birds as they walk between grass stems, running over tree branches, or dodging bamboo traps set by rice farmers. Tinikling is commonly performed at schools and on special occasions, such as the Filipino Independence Day, as a celebration of Filipino culture and Filipino pride. Now this school does put a little bit of a twist to the music. Usually, tinikling songs would be fast-paced, beating of the drums, but in this case, they did a instrumental version of the song Why You Gotta Be So Rude by Magic. Enjoy! <laughs> Hey there, Lincia. Don't mind me, I'm just listening to Enrique Iglesias, a Spanish and Filipino singer and songwriter. Speaking of Filipinos, what have they contributed to this society? Well, over 2,500 Filipinos were veterans in World War II. They worked on the promise that they would receive citizenship and full veteran benefits. Unfortunately, most of them did not receive their benefits until 2009, when Barack Obama was elected into office. Even then, most of them didn't receive their benefits. But what else did they contribute? Well, they started the labor strikes, which granted better rights and better working conditions and wages to those who worked in the fields. But what else did they contribute? Come, follow me. Let me tell you a story. There have been many Filipino inventors, politicians, entertainers, and many in the medical field. Let me tell you about a couple of them. Pedro Flores. He was a Filipino inventor that made a new patent for the yo-yo. He made it so that you can that it uses a loop instead of a knot around the axle, so you can do new tricks like walking the dog. Tony Tan Kak Tioing, he brought Jollibee over to America. He made it so that you can eat Filipino food in a fast food setting, so people like me and you could have lumpia on the go. Benjamin Cayetano, he was the first Filipino American governor of Hawaii. And Faye Del Mundo, she was the first woman and first Filipino to attend Harvard University Medical School. The Filipino Repatriation Act of 1935 established a repatriation program for Filipinos living in the United States, by which they were provided free passage back to the Philippines. If they wished to return to the U.S., the Filipinos were restricted under the quota system established by the Tidy McDuffel Act of 1934. Family reunification was halted, keeping many Filipinos waiting for years to see their family members. The Tidy McDuffel Act is a United States federal law that established the process for the Philippines, then an American colony, to become an independent country after a 10 year transition period. Under the Act, the 1935 Constitution of the Philippines was written and the Commonwealth of the Philippines was established. With the first directly elected president of the Philippines, it also established limitations on Filipino immigration to the United States. One of the issues that Filipino Americans face today is that they suffer an identity crisis in this generation. They are interconnected with American culture and their Filipino culture. They are stuck in between two worlds because of assimilating in the early 20th century. Filipino Americans' ethnic identity is assumed to be the product of a process constructing a life in the U.S. due to discrimination when migrating here. This is the reason to why they are a forgotten Asian American group. Another issue would be a situation of a brain drain, where some Filipinos will go to school in the Philippines because it is cheaper and come back to the U.S. with a higher degree of an education. 
However, they do not stay in their country to help out.